Good evening, Rachel here in Boston's North End at the Wine Bottega Wine Shop. We are here for a very special occasion tonight. We're here for the tasting of the Louis Dresner portfolio. So we're down in the tasting room with Matteo and he's going to lead us through some of these wines because you've had a great deal to do with picking out these wines for this event, correct? Yeah, I mean, my best job in the world is working here and uh, picking out these wines. Of course, Dresner's wines are absolutely some of my favorite. So tonight we're hosting a whole bunch of um, the folks from Dresner, but also some wines that we love and also some wines that you've never seen before. Um, so first up is one of our tried and true favorites, and this is Marc Olivier. Okay. He is one of our favorite Muscadet producers. And this is Domaine de la Pépier, Claude de Briord. Muscadet, totally underrated wine. You can drink this now, great with oysters, or in 20 years. Amazing value, $16. And then, you know, for it's really classic stuff. Awesome, so let's taste yeah, it. Yeah, taste Cheers. It's classic stuff. I think, you know, these are some of the people who are really sort of pushing the boundaries of what's available for wine in the United States. So really focusing on the small production, interesting, mm -hmm. off the beaten path, you know, <laughs> regions you've never heard of, grapes you've never heard of, which to us is what makes it really exciting. Yeah. You know, I always want to try something new. And these guys help us do our job better. Uh, and they're also just amazing, interesting, down to earth people. We are here with Lee Campbell from Louis Dresner, and she's going to tell us a little bit about their amazing Beaujolais. So this is um, a Beaujolais Village by Damien Coquelet. Okay. Um, there's a few things that are really important important about this wine. Number one, Beaujolais is an area that's been much maligned. Um, not naming any names, but a lot of these wines came into you know, the United States in the 1980s and the 1970s, and people really think they have their mind up, made up about these wines. The thing about uh, people like Damien Coquelet and his father, whose name is George Descombe, and a cadre of other producers in the Morgon region is that they have completely changed direction up the ante when it comes to these wines. So whereas the wines that came into the United States for a long time were made very commercially, very industrially, these are wines that really kicked off the natural wine movement in France. And so the producers, yeah, yeah I mean, that's really important because I think that um, we talk a lot about these natural wines coming out of Europe right now, and largely France, but we're seeing lots coming out of Italy and other places. 2009 is an amazing vintage. Um, in France, overall, 09 is a really high quality vintage. Um, so you're getting a lot of bang for your buck there. And then you're tasting this wine from a young winemaker who's showing you what the terroir can do. Um, he's working very naturally in the same tradition as his father, um, and he's showing showing you basically what Southern Burgundy is about. Um, you know, in general these days, it's harder and harder to drink red Burgundy at a decent price. And Beaujolais is essentially just the Southern tip of Burgundy. You're getting this wine, you know, under $20, um, and drinking something that's a food wine, but still really easy on its own, and shows a lot of quality. So um, we're excited to see where he goes with it, but we're very happy with where he is right now. Wine is all about that story, and it's not just the person making the wine, but it's also the people, you know, who then choose to import that wine, and then yep. it's all about that conversation and, mm -hmm. and bringing people together. So <laughs> hopefully by having, you know, them here tonight and our customers being able to meet them, you know, you sort of get that the dialogue happening and you feel closer to the wines and just have a greater understanding of the picture of it. One of the most polarizing wines of the night is <laughs> the Dard Rebo Crow's Hermitage, a wine from the Northern Rhone. Uh -huh. um, you know, the Northern Rhone for the last 25 years has had its identity problems. Uh, bigger producers are coming in, conglomerizing the region, and quote unquote, making wines in a certain way. Um, Dard Rebo are two friends um, mm -hmm. making the wines in their own small estate. They have holdings in Sandra Steff and, and Crow's, but they make wines that are for freshness and drinkability in their youth. So um, maybe something not to age for a super long time, but the wines are all about bright, acidity, kind of crunchy, what the French would call a vin de soif, or a wine for thirst. It's great, because Carrie and I often disagree about a lot of things, mm -hmm. um, which is what makes it a lot of fun in here, because we each, you know, see what each other like, and we know mm -hmm. what each other don't like, and uh, this one's drawn a divide once in a while, but I think, I think she'll see it's awesome too. I think it's beautiful. Yeah, it does have that nice ripe acidity, and actually has a little bit of bitterness on it, which it's, I like. Yeah, it's got the bitterness, and mm -hmm. it's a very elegant one. Absolutely. Um, this is just 12% alcohol from the Rhone, which is atypical, very Absolutely. Burgundian look at Yeah, uh, it's a beautiful the, wine. Yeah. It's easy, you know, most wine shops sort of say, like, oh, we have these great unique selections, but maybe it's only 20% of what they carry. And we said, you know what, that's... That's nuts. Let's do it all the way. Everything should have a story behind it. We want to know who the winemaker is. We Absolutely. want to you know, be able to share that with people. And it's tricky because if you have 
the unique things, but then you have the safe things, a lot of people are going to come in and just gravitate towards the safe wines. And so the way we do this, you know, we're very much here to answer any questions, help people mm -hmm. find something. You know, if they say, well, I like this, what should I try? You know, we have to have that dialogue with them. But it's, uh, it's been amazing to see, you know, I think wine is, is so much more than a beverage. And it's because it's... It's all those things that go into it to make that possible. The history, the culture, the chemistry, the all those pieces. Yeah, yeah the terroir. And, uh, and so by being able to, you know, it's almost like people have to have a conversation when they come in. They come in, they look at the shelves, and they're like, I have never seen any of these wines. <laughs> yeah. And they can get a little bit freaked out. <laughs> yeah. But I think if we, you know, we're very laid back here, you know, we don't take it too seriously. We are not wine snobs. Uh, so, yeah, once that conversation gets rolling, I think people are really excited to discover something new and to have that experience.